very, very, very. So, good morning, everyone. Welcome to My Vedic Roots. Today's topic is Nutrition Weight Management by Dr. Mansi Pujari. Before we start uh, introducing the speaker for the day, I just like to say a few words about My Vedic Roots. My Vedic Roots is a platform that connects Indians to their roots. We bring you closer to wisdom and knowledge of our Vedas through pujas from holy places, yoga from the land of yoga, Vastu Shastra, the Asian art of house design and cultural education, like Indian languages, music, dance, and your grandma's cooking right from the heartland of India. Ayurveda is an Asian Vedic system of medicine. It originated more than 3000 years ago. Ayur means life, and Veda means knowledge. So literally, it means knowledge of life. We would like to bring you solutions to a problem that approximately 80 million people in the US are suffering from. In this session, we are joined by Dr. Mansi Pujara, who is renowned nutritionist from India and has helped thousands of clients lead healthier and happier life. We will take approximately 45 minutes to conduct this webinar and will be available for questions and answers after the conclusion of the webinar. Now, a bit about Dr. Mansi Pujara. Over to you, Japneet, for the introduction. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity and I'm really glad and feeling proud to you know, introduce Dr. Mansi Pujara. Uh, so Dr. Mansi Pujara is an Ayurveda consultant, clinical dietitian, and a yoga instructor. She has overall a long 17 plus years of experience in Ayurvedic practice and seven plus years of experience in the diet and nutrition practice. Her endeavor is to bring the benefits of Ayurveda, nutrition, and yoga to her clients. She holds a degree in Ayurveda, diploma in dietics and nutrition, certification in sports nutrition, and diploma in Panch Karma, Panch Bhautik Chikitsa, and yoga from well known institutions. To keep up with her continuous growth of knowledge, she is currently pursuing her master's in sports nutrition and a master's in Yogastra from leading institutions in Mumbai. She has also been a faculty in the VLCC Institute of Nutrition and a visiting nutrition for some hospitals. She operates a wellness clinic that offers Ayurvedic medications and treatments, diet and nutrition consultations, weight loss and slimming treatments, and yoga training. So with that, that's all about Dr. Mansi Pujara. I'm really happy to see Dr. Mansi on the screen now. Very warm welcome, Dr. Mansi. Thank you. Thank you, Japneet Singh, for introduction. A very good evening to all. So all are here, right, for transformation, yeah? Because, like, whenever you lose weight or whenever you gain weight or maybe, you know, like, more to be specific, whenever there's fat loss or there's fat gain, you know, like, it's transforming, you know, like, from our original one to a new one, you know, like, people enjoy that transformation. So all of you are here. And to start presentation, I will share my screen. So regarding weight management, in the last one, one and a half year, if you see, there is a drastic change in people's lifestyle. So there has been a lot of weight gain or weight loss because there is a huge change in the lifestyle. And whenever there is a change in lifestyle, it will directly impact your health and directly impact your weight. So it is a concern for everyone, not only for elders or adults, but also for kids, for children, for adolescents. I have clients from all range of age group. So... During whenever you are looking for a weight loss or a weight gain, the quick fix or the easy thing to do is, you know, you just Google it out, you know, so like, so people just Google it out, they find different types of diets and online we have n number of fat diets, you know, like which are actually, if you see they are imbalanced diet, they will be, may be missing one or the other nutrient. So you will, or you may get results, you know, but those are short term results. And again, after some time, once you come back to your original lifestyle, you know, if you come back to the square. So where from wherever you have started. But whenever you consider Ayurveda, Ayurveda tries to find out the root cause, you know, like why it is happening. It tries to find out what is the body type, you know, like it 
tries to make changes in the root cause at the ground level and with the long term results you know so there are small small changes in the lifestyle but the results what will be available will be a long term results so to start with the weight management let's first understand what is ayurveda ayurveda is made up of two words there is ayur and veda and it is an age old tradition system of medicines you know which has been practiced in india since years since vedas so ayur is life and veda is science so basically it's a science which talks about life you know like how to improve your life how to improve the quality of the life how to improve the longevity of the life it tells us or it gives us a list of do's and don'ts you know what one need to follow in their daily routine so that you know they can manage their health so if you see the aim of ayurveda you know the aim is to prevent or maintain the health of a healthy person you know that is the first aim you know not letting the person to go into any form of of disease and weight also is a type of a disease in fact ayurveda believes that weight is one of the main cause for many other diseases so you need to be in a ideal weight then you can prevent many other diseases so what is the base which ayurveda believes or ayurveda works you know so ayurveda works on the principles and the of five elements it believes that outside nature is made up of five elements and same way our body is also made up of five elements like if you can see example outside we have space same way we have space inside our body as well you know like we have a digestive system where it is full of space there is entirely there is nothing inside there only whenever you eat food the food or the bolus will pass throughout the system and will get digested then we have air so we have air outside and similarly we have air inside our body as well we breathe in we breathe out and it is oxygen which is called as a prana you know it reaches each and every cell of our body then we have fire so outside we have sun god and similarly we have a fire inside our body as well that is digestive fire you know like that is very important for all the transformation which is taking place inside our body you know like whenever there is a good amount of fire the food whatever you are eating it will get properly digested at all different levels and will be getting converted or transformed into a particular tissues in a healthy way or in a balanced way then we have water so we have water outside in nature so we have sea oceans well everything similarly our body everybody knows it is made up of 70% of water and finally it is earth so we know earth so earth is basically you know it indicates or symbolizes solidity it's a solid structure so inside our body also all the organs if you consider like it may be liver it can be heart so all the organs are a part of the earth element so these are the five elements from which our body is made up and we should start understanding you know like how it works so to make it easy ayurveda has uh, considered this five elements in the form of three energies or three humors or three attributes you know or three types so that is vata pitta and kapha so why is it that because see whenever there is a space there is a air you know like whenever there is a space like inside a room also if you see if there is a space there is a air along with it so they both both go hand to hand you know so that is vata then whenever there is a water there is a earth you know so the water it always needs a base you know like if you see outside like in the nature if there is a sea or if there is a ocean you know there is a base of the earth so water and earth they both go hand in hand and that and that dosha is kapha dosha and fire itself is fire which is high in heat so these are the three main attributes or energies which are flowing inside our body and we are made up of these elements or these energies now whenever the person has more of kapha inside the body so the person has more of water earth water and earth inside their body the tendency of them is to to be on the heavier side you know as water and earth they both are heavy you know so those persons their tendencies is to put on weight or they'll be always on the heavier side you know they will try they will manage but they'll come back to their original weight and those persons those are more of vata as indicates it has more of space and more of air so it is very light you know they are very lighter in their nature they are always in the smaller size you know gaining weight is always a challenge for them so those is 
because there is more of vata in them. And then there is a pitta prakruti, which is more of pitta or balance, which is mean for transformation. So the pitta is very good in them. So they have good amount of energy, good amount of fire. So whatever they are eating, that is getting properly digested and hence they are generally be able to maintain their weight. So these are the basic principles and the other important principle is about the dhatus or the tissues, you know, like so Ayurveda believes, you know, seven tissues, the body is made up of seven tissues. So first is whatever food we eat, you know, that will get converted into digestive juice. So it, the first thing is digestive juice from which there will be the formation of the blood tissue. From blood, there will be formation of muscles. From muscles, there will be formation of fat. So today we'll be understanding how this fat is being formed inside the body and what factors decide, you know, like how much fat will be formed inside my body. And accordingly, that will decide, you know, how much will be my weight. From fat, you know, further, if you see, it will bone, tish, bone tissue is formed. And from bone tissue, there is nervous tissue. And from nervous tissue, there is the reproductive fluid or the semen or the ovum. So these are the main seven tissues which Ayurveda believes. And today our focus is to understand what, how the fat is formed or how the fat tissue is formed, which is also called as a meat dhatu in Sanskrit. So as you see in the picture, you know, like it's a meal, it's a food, whatever you're eating, you know. So once you're eating your meal, it will get converted into a digestive juice, which will be full of all the nutrients. Like everybody knows it's full of, it may be like proteins or carbs or fats or minerals or vitamins. So those, that is the first your digestive juice that will get converted into to your blood then from blood there will be formation of muscles and from muscles there will be formation of fats so as you can see in the last week you know like so there is uh, they have shown the fats you know like which is accumulated on your body so the yellow color is a fat now these fat formation in my body will be decided depending on my body type you know like how this fat whether it will be stored in the higher form whether it will be in the lower form whether i'll be able to lose that fat or not so it is all decided decided by the body type. So Ayurveda believes that there are three main body types. You know? So further also, there are different body types, but like broadly, once you classify, you know, so as per the dominance, we have Kapha body type, then we have Pitta body type, and we have Vata body type. So as you can see from the picture as well, also, if you see the Kapha people, as we understood earlier, that Kapha is more of earth and it is more of water. They are all normally on the heavier side from the birth, you know. So gain Gaining weight is very easy for them, you know, like, so whenever there is a change in lifestyle or if they are not working out, not doing exercises, if they are at their leisure, they will easily gain weight, you know, so they don't have to do anything. So they are normally, they are having a higher structure, uh, they are very stable and their metabolism is comparatively very slow. Then, then comes the Pitta prakruti. So pitta is or pitta body type, you know, where the fire is very good. So whenever you have a good fire, the metabolism is very good. So those are the people, you know, those who are always in their ideal weight structure or the transformation is such good, you know, like these people, if they decide they want to lose weight, they can easily lose weight. If they decide they want to gain weight, they will easily gain weight, you know, like, so because the metabolism is very good, the fire is very good. So whatever the food eaten will be properly digested and getting converted into fats. And then the third category is the vata. Vata is the people, those who are, you know, always on the lower side, always on the leaner side. They have got a very small structure. So gaining weight is really a challenge for them, you know. So they will eat so much of food and they will try their best, you know, but they will not gain weight. So basic or broadly, if you classify it as a kapha body type, pitta and a vata. And whether you will lose weight or whether you will lose fat or gain weight or gain fat will be decided as per the body type like for example if you see these three categories so whenever they are eating a similar food maybe like a 2000 kilo calories right so if they are eating all the three persons are having the same food they are doing the same activities okay but what happens you know whenever they are sleeping at night you know like so whenever throughout the day i am doing my work so there is wear and tear and at night you know the repairing take place you know so whenever the repairing is being taking place the cuff of people or the cuff of body type the metabolism is that slow that only some amount of calories is enough for the body to work. 
So out of 2000, for example, like you can see it's only 1500 calories are being used and 500 calories is a surplus, you know. But whenever you see the other body type, the middle one with the body type, whatever they are eating, you know, like so they are consuming 2000 kilocalories, whenever they are night they are sleeping and the repairing is taking place, all the 2000 will be utilized because the metabolism is good, you know, like the metabolism is working very nice, the fire is working at the proper place or proper balance. And hence, they will utilize all the 2,000 calories. Now, when you come to Vata, Vata, as we know, there's more of space, there is more of air. So whenever there is more of air, there is more of oxidative stress. You know, there's more of oxygen inside the body and more of working is taking place. You know, the more of wear and tear. So whenever they are sleeping at night and the repairing is taking place, the 2,000 calories is not sufficient for them. So the body will start utilizing their muscles. They will start utilizing utilizing the stored fats and they will take out another 500 calories from that to make the repairing and hence they will use 2500 kilocalories so the next day when all these people wake up in the morning the tougher body type there is a surplus of 500 kilocalories so there will be a gain in the fat tissue and they will eventually they will gain weight if there is a pitta type of body type they will utilize you know so there is no surplus so there is actually a balance in the calories and they will not gain they will not lose weight but when you come to vata body type actually they have consume more 500 from their own tissues you know the own earlier fat or on their own muscles so they will have a lot of muscle loss they will have fat loss and in the next morning you know they will be deficient and they will be losing weight so though all the three people they are having same workout they are having same amount of calories but since the body type is different the body will utilize in a different way and this will lead to either weight gain or this will lead to either weight loss so this is a concept of Ayurveda, how it works. And hence, while managing weight, you know, when you think about Ayurveda, so modern point of view, we work only on calories, you know, like how much calories should I need, you know, whether I need 2000 calories or 1500 calories. But as we saw, you know, like only calories is not sufficient because though people are having same calories, the how the things or how the food will get metabolized is entirely different. So even in example, like if you can see the food, so Ayurveda believes that whatever food you are eating is also made up of five elements. So the food also has the same thing or the same elements, you know. So whenever I'm considering like for an example, like if I want to give a corn to a client, you know, like so if I have a client which is having a vat prakriti or a vat body type and it's a leaner side the how we should he eat the corn then it should be in the form of a boil you know like it can be a boiled sweet corn or it can make a bread out of you know where where we add a little bit of water so you can make a tortilla or you can uh, add it in the form of wherever you are having a little bit of moisture so what will happen because there's a lot of space inside them but if the person will have water and element though uh, that corn whenever he is eating that will help him to gain weight but on the other side whenever the person is having a kapha body type it is on the healthier side in the higher side I will advise him to have the same corn in the form of a popcorn so once the corns are popped you know what happens there is a lot of space inside there they will become very light in nature so whenever you consume the popcorn in the form of a corn pops then that will help you to reduce weight you know it will not help you to gain weight so though if you see the 100 grams of calories in uh, popcorn on the corn is same you know like whether it's boiled or whether it is a pop but the how the body will metabolize it it is entirely different similarly you can take an example of a fruit you know like so sometimes people say banana whether to have banana or whether to not to have banana you know banana is very gaining so how it works you know if you see a calories wise there's very little difference between a banana or maybe an apple or an orange you know but how it works so banana is very heavy in uh, earth element you know like so whenever the person the leaner person is having he needs more of the earth and he needs more of water so if he's consuming banana it will give, help him to gain weight it will keep him feel heavy and it will also uh, give him calmness you know because they are very high in prep in nature because there's a lot of oxidative stress happening so it will keep in mild but at the same time whenever i'm thinking to give a fruit i will give an option of orange you know for a person those who are of tougher body type because like orange is very light if you just hold it in the hand it's very light it is full of 
uh, air inside that in between the tissues. There's a lot of space between it. It is not dense, you know, the density is not there. So whenever the person with the cover body type is having orange, what will happen? It will make him lighter. It will make him feel light, you know. So though calories are same, you know, but how you select the food, how should be the, uh, what should be the elemental structure or the content of the food will help the person to lose weight or the gain weight. Similarly, we also have examples, you know, so there are many kitchen herbs, you know, like in Ayurveda, we believe, you know, like, so try to inculcate what is available in their home or which is easily available or naturally available. And there are some herbs, you know, like, you know, cinnamon, pepper, ginger. So we also consume them in the form of tea nowadays, you know, we outside, we have lots of cinnamon tea, green tea, which have all these herbs and they are categorized under the weight loss. So how they help them? So they basically work work on the body type you know like so whenever you are having these type of herbs you're putting inside the water and you are having it they will actually improve your metabolism they will improve the digestive fire so if you see the nature of these herbs they are actually hot by nature whenever you consume them they will actually improve your digestive fire and whatever food you are eating you know they will help it to completely properly digest and reducing the conversion of it into the fats also whenever the client comes for weight gain you know then we give them a different herbs you know which will actually keep them calm relaxed you know so the amount of calories or amount of uh, the digestive fire which they are utilizing the body is utilizing its own fats will relax will you know will work uh, in a balanced manner and it will not use the excess of fats or excess of muscle from the body so we give them nutmeg or we give them poppy seeds or fennel seeds these are all cool and all relaxed they will make the person feel better calm and hence they will start gaining weight so whenever we consider ayurveda approach not only for weight loss or weight gain or any disease or just as a maintaining a healthy lifestyle it's a complete holistic approach you know it's a complete lifestyle it will try to look at the root cause of the uh, disease or try to look at the body type or the nature of the person and hence accordingly you know what in the nature outside you know the person should have it and how he should have it which will help him to maintain his health as well as his weight so with this i end my session uh, i hope you all find it useful and you are able to connect yourself with Ayurveda and nature and, you know, and consider thinking that, you know, you need to understand, you know, how or what changes I should make in my diet or my lifestyle, which will help me to balance my body type or my body doshas or my body energies, all the three energies, and that will help me to lose weight or gain weight or finally achieve a healthy lifestyle. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Mansi. That was really, really insightful. And as you can see, there are a lot of questions in the chat box. So um, maybe we can just go through some questions. So what I heard you say was it's really about your body type and based on your body type, then you need to eat, you know, what, uh, what is good for you. Uh, just so that you know, Dr. Mansi Pujari is based in uh, India and she's a very renowned figure. Uh, so if any one of you wants a one-on-one -on -one consultation with her, we can organize that as well for you. So I'm uh, over to uh, the questions, doctor. So there is a person who's stuck with weight. I eat healthy. I walk every day. I'm going through a loss of my son. I've gained 15 pounds. I think it's hormonal. I love everything that is natural. Uh, I went to a doctor and all my blood work is good. So doctor, any advice for this patient correctly so as we saw you know like so there are many reasons and first is body type you know so the body type is going to definitely matter but that again i come to know once i consult you know but meanwhile as uh, you already informed or the client informed that you know she is going through some sort of stress you know like psychological stress you know which is uh actually disturbing the uh, pattern or uh, disturbing the digestive fire you know so whatever the food is being eating is not properly digested because you're always in the stress you know so the what till the time we find out what is the body type and work on it yes we need to do something which will help you to reduce the stress you know so as we discussed you know so there are some herbs you know which you can include in your diet that will help you to relax you know so once the mind is relaxed you know you will eat properly you will digest properly the fire will work properly and there will 
will be reduction in the weight or you will at least you will feel on the healthier side so you can start having a uh, uh, nutmeg powder in the milk if you are having if you are not having milk then you can just have it with the water as well and start having it at the night you know like so once you take it at the bedtime it will help you to improve the sleep cycle once you sleep properly it will also reduce the stress the next day and it will help you to further digest the food so nutmeg powder is easily available outside so you can just take one four teaspoon of it you can just put it in the milk boil it and you can have it and if you are not having milk you can just have it with the plain water and you can have it at the bedtime thank you dr mansi there's a question from a doctor which says is it is it worth to trust on ayurveda obviously allopathic doctors will always ask that question <laughs> true true correct you know like because like they have not studied right so once you study ayurveda once you practice ayurveda ayurveda is a science of experiment you know like because those attributes or those energies you know it is difficult to see physically you know like when i say you know vata and pitta so like it is difficult to physically feel or visualize or you know it's difficult to uh, see them on the papers you know like okay this much is vata and this much is kapha so it is a science of experiment you know like so once you start following the fundamentals once you start understanding the logic inculcating in your routine and you start getting results you start believing <laughs> yeah great there are a lot of questions doctors ask but i think we can uh, connect you online uh, through email and have a private chat on that um, there's a question which mm-hmm. says that ayurveda is ayurveda a slow process compared to maybe other diets so how soon can we see the results See any diet whenever you are as we talk earlier you know so there are some quick fix you know like so you stop certain nutrients and you follow that diet you know you consider as a fat diet or a crash diet you know which are going to definitely give you a very fast result you know like but whenever you are thinking long term whenever you're thinking ayurveda we need to work on the root cause we need to find out what is the body type we need to work on that and make small small changes which you can carry out throughout your life because this is your body type you know this is with which you are born with you know like so you can change the body type but you can change your lifestyle as per your body type so small small changes when you start making you know definitely the results will be on a little bit on the slower pace right but it's not that slow of course whenever the, i have clients you know so we reduce easily 3 to 5 kg a month you know but that is with small small changes and not cutting down the nutrients or not cutting down or the more amount of calories or uh, not making any fat changes you know which will have a long term or a wrong effect on your body so those slow but you know long term it is going to be helpful and it's not just weight loss as i said you know like it's about the lifestyle you know like it will overall help you to maintain a good health uh, lifestyle so after losing weight one should not feel drained one should not feel uh, lack of energy or low on energy and sometimes we feel you know the people are in fact you know like my clients they say you know like people are saying you know are i whether i am sick or not you know like because i have lost weight you know like so it should not reflect in fact it should be other way when you lose 10 kg 15 kg 20 kg or some you know you should feel more healthier you should look more healthier it should be reflected in your uh, look you know like so that's the way you should lose weight by having all the things needed as per the nutrition and as per your digestive fire and as per your body type so of course yeah it's a slow process but of course not that slow and i feel you know like what the we should keep in mind is the uh, final goal or final result you know which we are looking for great doctor um so there's another question in the q and a box uh, in the pandemic uh, the weight gain especially the belly fat please give me some insights on to reduce it i'm a tech worker and i guess this is a problem everybody is having because in the pandemic uh, everything is work from home the travel time is reduced and therefore people are just sitting and working and eating so yeah any uh, words of wisdom for this person yeah yeah definitely as i start my uh, i started even my uh, this uh, presentation saying that this last one one and a half year there's a huge change in lifestyle you know like even my clients you know i can see you know there's a lot of weight gain and as uh, the 
uh, person said, you know, like more of abdominal fat, you know, because there's lack of movements, there's lack of activity and there's more of eating, you know, like once we are at home, we are working at home, the food becomes very easy to uh, take or grab and, you know, like while working also, we just keep eating. So that's the reason, you know, so the simple thing, you know, like I, about the abdominal fat, you know, like, so what is the logic behind abdominal fat is a large meal, you know, as we saw the body types, of course, the body type is definitely the digestive just fire is slow so what you are eating the calories are actually needed very less and there's always a surplus so when this is happening and in that case if you are having a larger meals you know because sometimes it happens you know like we have just one time and we just try to eat it everything though it is maybe healthy because you know people are really conscious about the health you know so they feel that okay these are the superfoods which i need to eat to make my healthy lifestyle but how much to eat that is very important so though they are superfood or though they are very healthy in nature but if I consume all the superfood every time whatever I eat and in a good amount or in the amount more than my body type you know more than what I need then definitely even those healthy food is also going to get into fat formation so you need to include like whenever there's a benefit the idea is to have small amount of meals you know which your body or the digestive fire can actually properly digest it so once it is properly digested, it will get converted into energy. The body will use it, you know, whenever there's a repairing going on or whenever you are working out or you are just sitting on a chair and you are working out. But if the portion size is less and the fire, according to the fire, it will properly digest the food. So the simple or the thing which we, you can start is to have a small meals, you know, like, and how to decide the small meals is to decide as per the hunger levels, you know, how you are feeling hungry. Sometimes we don't think whether we are hungry or not you know we just it's a time to have or i have a break i will just eat it so you think about a fire you know whether you whenever if there is a good digestive fire inside your tummy whenever there is a release of acids you know you feel hungry so try to mindfully understand whether i'm hungry or not you know like so once you understand that yes i am hungry Try to eat at that particular time because that, that time, you know, the digestion will be on the higher side. You know, the food will get completely digested. So, and eat as much as needed, you know, like, so it's not like after four, five, six hours, I'm not going to have, so I will eat it in the double meal. No, then again, it will go into fat, you know, like, so eat as per your hunger levels and have small meals. Automatically, the abdominal fat will start moving up. So, doctor, I just want to share, uh, you know, after I had my baby and, you know, I had mm -hmm. put on a lot of weight and mm -hmm. obviously when you're traveling too much, uh, one thing which one of the dietitian told me was mm -hmm. you need to fix your time, you know, so mm -hmm. whatever it is, wherever you are, you know, mm -hmm. have a time, uh, yeah. so, uh, have not more than four hour gap between a meal and mm -hmm. uh, your meal, uh, it's not about what you eat, it's not about the what you eat it's about the quantity the quantity mm. control is a must like you know in, in, and especially what we do is if you like something we take one helping two helping three helping right and yes. it's about quantity control which is most important and that's what i heard you say again yes so yes, it's the, i think timing and the quantity control which you need to do and you know that's and eating early i don't know doctor that's there's a thing that if you eat before seven or eight you know your body gets more time to digest um, and that I think also works a lot so what is your take on yeah, that definitely. Yes, yes, Shreta. Definitely, you know, like as we saw the five elements, you know, like so outside the nature is also such, you know, like so we have a sunlight or the sun god, you know, like from morning seven to evening seven or morning six to evening six, you know, like so those are the timings, you know, like so as per even in US, like wherever we are all located, so there are different time zones, you know, sometimes, you know, the sun is goes up till nine. So till the time the sun is there outside, you know, the digestive fire is on the higher side. So according to your time zone, zones or according to the change in the sunrise and sunset you know you can plan your meals you know so till the time the sun is there the metabolism is good the, because it indicates that the fire is there you know so whenever there's outside fire the inside fire is also on the light side so immediately it is on the darker side you know like it will reduce the metabolism it will slow down metabolism you know like because we also work with nature you know like immediately when there is darkness you know we feel sleepy we feel lethargic we feel lazy you know the moment there is sunlight you know we feel energy 
energetic. So the metabolism is good till the time, you know, the sun god is outside. So we can always plan our meals as per the uh, sunrise and sunset. That's definitely going to help. Great. So doctor, I'll take last two questions. And then, uh, like I said, all our participants, Dr. Mansi is available for one-on-one -on -one consultations because I think it's more about to do with your body type what may work for my body may not work for your body. And therefore, I think you should take this opportunity after this uh, webinar to just put in an email or on the chat box and our team will come back to you. So doctor, over to you for the last two questions. Is it natural to gain weight during menopause? Yeah, natural in the sense, see, uh, again, there's, there is no one answer for all questions, right? So uh, again, body type will matter a lot, you know, like, so menopause also, uh, though you are in menopause, but finally, what, what, finally, what finally is your what body is your type? So again, see, menopause, definitely what happens in menopause is the estrogen levels goes down, you know, so there's a hormonal fluctuations, you know, the estrogens definitely helps us maintain our metabolism, you know, so once it is down, it is the metabolism drops, you know, like, so we have many other issues also, but again, the calorie requirement reduces, right? But again, finally, it will depend on the body type. You will not see in all the menopause uh, uh, ladies, you know, they are going or they are having a heavy body or they are having more weight or uh, they are increasing their weight. But we do find, you know, like people increase their weight in menopause and all. So again, finally, what is your body type? You know, that's going to help, you know. So if you are having a tougher body type, you know, the metabolism is definitely slow from earlier, from your birth itself, it is slow. And now because of menopause, there's Estrogens are going down, the further dropping the metabolism. So what happens is like earlier, if I was having one bread, you know, like then I was maintaining weight, you know, like, but now whenever I'm reaching my menopause, even that one bread is also causing me to gain weight. So what is happening is that the metabolism is going that slow, the fire is going that slow that for it to digest that one single slice of bread is also on the higher side. The calories will be on the surplus and the woman will start getting uh, uh, gaining weight. But as I said, it will depend on the body type only. If the person is from earlier only, if the person is having the vata body type, in fact, there will be more more of uh, oxidative stress happening, you know, because uh, aging is taking place, you know, so whenever you're aging, more of vibe is increased inside the body, you know, like, so because uh, what Ayurveda believes is whenever you are young or whenever you're the child, you know, like from 10, maybe zero to 20 years, the first 20 years, the kapha is on the higher side inside the body, the earth and the water are higher side, you know, whenever you are from 20 to 40 years of age, the fifth is higher, the fire is higher, the passion or the metabolism is in the higher side. Once you cross 40, so like after 40s, once you start aging, the vat is coming on the higher side for all the body types. So whether it can be your any body type, but finally the vat will be on the higher side. So earlier only if my body type is of a vata body type, then whenever I'm ending to menopause, you know, it will increase more. So rather than gaining weight, I will be having all the aging related use, uh, diseases or all the degenerative diseases. You know, it can be osteoporosis or osteoarthritis or any other issues, you know, like, so those will be more of concern, you know, at the time of the menopause. So it's not that everybody gains weight, but of course the hormones changes, the metabolism drops, the fire drops. So depending on your body type, you know, either you may gain weight or there may be some other issues, but as discussed, you know, like Ayurveda is uh, basically a lifestyle, you know, so if you follow the basics of uh, follow the concepts and you make changes in your food accordingly you can prevent many uh, symptoms or gaining weight even at the time of menopause so that's really detailed and thank you for that and then the i think last question is about you know is fasting once a week good for weight loss and uh, then there's a particular question of a person who says my body type is what and i'm having high cholesterol and hypothyroidism and what foods do you suggest to control both problems? So with that, we are done with the questions. So yes, over to you, Mansi. Yeah, so 
cholesterol again it's a fat you know like so body fat if you see fats in our body there are two types of fats you know like so one fat is which gets stored below the skin that is called subcutaneous fats you know like and the other type of fat is which is you know moving free in our blood you know like so whenever the metabolism is slow or the fire is slow and i'm having food uh, and the calories are on the higher side so depending on my body type you know either my body will store that fat below my skin so maybe i will have more of fats in my abdomen area or my hips or chest or thighs or depending on the type of the person and but sometimes what happens the metabolism is different you know like so it's not able to convert those extra calories into the subcutaneous fats you know so what is happening somewhere or the other the fat has to get stored because i'm eating the calories on the higher side or my body is not able to digest it so those extra fat they start moving in your blood and that is nothing but cholesterol right so again whenever you're looking for cholesterol it's type of fat only which one has to reduce so again the concept of eating small meals again the concept of uh, eating whenever you feel hungry uh, using different herbs you know which i mentioned you know like the cinnamon sticks you know you put it inside the water or whatever you're eating you can just sprinkle some pepper so what will happen the food whenever you're eating the food whenever it is digesting you know it will be properly digested you know conversion of it into fats or conversion of it into cholesterol will be less of course there are many do's and don'ts so definitely you know once we consult and i can guide you which foods are high in fats which foods are high in cholesterol definitely we need to avoid this because we want to reduce it but the concept is that we need to understand the type and we need to understand accordingly so that we can Uh, stop or we can reduce the conversion of the food into fats whether it can be a subcutaneous fat or whether it can be a cholesterol uh, same way in the type uh, thyroid you know like so it is hyperthyroid is always the metabolism is slow because of there are low releases of thyroid hormones though we take it from external um, uh, source but still you know the body's natural source is not being produced and hence the metabolism is slow so as per your age as per your height as per your weight you know we need to plan such way the food so that you know the body needs uh, according to the body needs so that you know nothing is going extra and nothing is going into fat then eventually you will start losing weight great so i think with that uh, we have come to the end of the webinar today uh, dr mansi um, i don't know about everyone else but i'm definitely coming in for a consultation with you so thank you very much and uh, with that uh, you know we can officially close the session for today and uh, i look forward to seeing you more often uh, doing the webinars and educating people about this golden um, subject of ayurveda so thank you uh, many thanks uh, from my vedic uh, roots thank you thank you thank Shreda. you dr mansi thank you for giving me the opportunity and sharing my experience